Welcome to this short video to the Introduction to Advanced Audit and Assurance or AAA. My name is Steve Chen and I'm the course director here for the APC. I'm also a fellow member of ACCA. So in this video, I'll be first of all going through the syllabus of AAA and then I'll be taking you through to some screenshot of the computer-based exam of what it looks like. Now, advanced audit and assurance. Let's see the syllabus first of all. The syllabus will be divided into will be divided into part A, B, C, D, E, and F. Let's see what each of them means in turn. For example, we'll be going through the regulatory environment. We'll be explaining the board for international standards and auditing in IFAC or International Federation of Accountant uh, and also will be explaining uh, quite a lot of other issues for example the money laundering issues which is illegal and external auditors should be uh, professionally skeptical about this and that's why it leads us to the professional and ethics ethical considerations in the part boy of the syllabus will be explaining the uh, attributes or the principles in IVAC code of ethics including professional behavior integrity competence and due care confidentiality and objectivity at the same time we'll be explaining quite lots of threats threatening the objectivity of external auditors so in the AAA exam there should be a question uh, asking you about the part boy of the syllabus. And from my experience, and according to the marking scheme, normally there will be one mark per point related to part B, which is the ethical considerations. So we'll now move on to part C, it's the practice management. Especially when you are setting up your own audit firm how are you going to advertise your audit firm and other quality control issues that you should be considering? Well, the quality control issues will be primarily related to when you sign a contract uh, with the client that you wish to work for and then you're going to plan your audit and do your audit, review your audit and provide your audit report. All these stages, you have to maintain sufficient level of quality so you can minimize the risks of issuing a wrong audit opinion as a result. So that's quite important in the part C. And that's why it brings us to the part DOC. It's going to start to do our audit, which means, first of all, we should plan our audit and then we should decide whether we should use the test of control or we can use the control testing to go through the client's internal control systems including its sales cycle, purchase cycle, payroll cycle, PPE cycle and so on and so forth. So you're right and these are covered or these were covered in your previous studies which is the audit and assurance and I'm sure at this level, or the advanced audit and assurance, the examiner may not be particularly interested in those areas because at this level, you are more required to apply your knowledge to a more complicated scenario. And that's the reason why, in the second part of this uh, syllabus, in the part doc, is we're going to conduct the audit of historical financial information Mainly, we are taking the IFIs or International Financial Reporting Standard that we've learned from the SBR or Strategic Business Reporting in the P level of your studies. Particularly, you will be experiencing questions like the audit of deferred tax asset, the audit of employees' benefits, the audit of share based payments and even the audit of financial instrument and so on and so forth. 
And usually, the examiner would set one mark per point regarding substantive procedures. Okay, at this level, so absolutely, you will see some questions in 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 your AAA uh, paper later on. And once we finish off all of our audit work, of course, don't forget to summarize them into the working paper. So perhaps the client is going to sue you, so you can provide your working papers to confirm or to show the evidence to the court that you comply with the ISA or the International Standards on Auditing when doing your audit work. And that's quite important in the part E, is to review what you have done. Of course, at the same time, you have to review whether there will be additional events happening after the client's financial statements event. So, if we, for, for, for example, in accounting, if events happened after the event, this is called events after the reporting period according to the IAS number 10. And of course, from the auditor's point of view, we have to be sure whether these events have been properly adjusted by management or not. And we have to decide whether these events are subsequent events where we have active or passive responsibilities according to the International Standards on Auditing 560. And of course, there will be other areas that we will be covering in the Part E as well. So for example, whether the client will be a going concern entity or not, and how we're going to determine the materiality overall after we've uh, urged management to correct all those errors during our audit. And finally, we will be reporting it. As you can see, the audit report format, you have to learn it. And don't worry, in our course, you will see uh, some tips and tricks of how you can memorize or learn the audit report format and what each section actually means. So, just to give you a, uh, a hint, uh, a paragraph in the audit report is key audit matter. Okay, it's the key audit matter. Which means we will be explaining there will be certain risks of material misstatement or the chances that financial statements would go wrong. But actually, if we were to include these events into this paragraph, it simply be the client hasn't done anything wrong, but there certainly be a risk for that. It might go wrong. So, for example, the financial instruments uh, valuation is quite complex because uh, usually it involves the determination of fair value. And that's the reason why it is likely to go wrong or easily to go wrong, but it hasn't gone wrong yet, so we're going to include this into the key audit matter paragraph in the audit report. So there will be lots and lots of other examples I can give you during our course, no worries for that. And finally, the part F is the other assignment. At this level, or in this paper, we are not only providing audits, audit work to our clients, perhaps we'll be providing non-audit work, so for example, uh, the review of the cash flows forecasts provided by management, because the management wishes to obtain finance from the bank, and we're going to review it, perhaps we'll be issuing the negative uh, assurance, which means we're going to review his work to see whether or not anything has come to your attention suggesting the assignment is right or wrong. So, there will certainly be other areas in the part F, I will be seeing them later on in our course. So that's the overall syllabus in the AAA paper. Now, let's move on. How about for the exam? The exam 
is the whole two marks in total. If you can get 50 or more than 50, you can pass this paper. The exam will be divided into 195 minutes of 3 hours and 15 minutes. Uh, and in our course, we'll be explaining the way that we're going to plan our time using the bet my approach. And the exam will be divided into section A. It simply be one fifty marker question. Uh, and of course, it's very likely that the examiner will heavily testing uh, the audit risk question in the section A. And also the Section A contains four professional marks and make sure that you choose the correct format. Uh, for example, the examiner may ask you a briefing paper or a report and making sure that you're absolutely familiar with the format that the examiner has required for. In Section B, there'll be another 25 marker question. So all of the questions in the AAA paper are compulsory, which means you have to do it. So there will be one, uh, one question in section A, 50 marks. There will be two questions, uh, each 25 in the section B. So the section B may ask you about the substantive procedures or the report questions or perhaps the other assignments in the service part F. Now, the ACCA has provided you with examinable documents and you can see differentiating from the audits and assurance which is uh, your previous paper for audits, AA and now it's AAA. As you can see, there will be quite a lot of ISA that you have to go through, something like that and something like that and even for the uh, quality control standards and so on and practice notes and so on uh, and also the um, other engagement for example the review engagement and so on uh, and so on and so forth you have to go through all of them but my advice to you is that the examiner is not particularly interested in the detailed content in each of the ISA during your, uh, in your exam. And it's quite important that you understand the basic principle of each standard, uh, but it's better that you apply uh, these standards into a set of exam standard questions given by the examiner. That's more important from my perspective. So my advice to you is to practice as many past examination questions first of all and then you will see how each standard was or is going to be consistently tested in each and every paper and make sure that you would do this okay so it's absolutely uh, more useful that you simply read the content in each of the ISA but you simply practice the question and refer to the ISA and this approach will be more effective from my perspective. So, let's see the computer based exam. You can click on this link and you will see the, what the computer based exam environment looks like. So first of all, you should use the highlight function. So when you read a question, highlight the key information, first of all, into your favourite colour, for example, yellow or green and so on. And then, if I were you, I'd like to take this note down onto my paper as well, to make sure it reminds me of what sort of key information I have to use in my question, in my answer. And second, you will see clicking on the requirement and you will see quite a few requirements in there.
And then for these requirements, what you should do then is to copy and paste it to your response options. For example, you decide to choose the breathing note to respond to this question. So first of all, to copy all the requirements and then paste it to your breathing note. And then you will design your answer structure of what sort of things should be included in your answer later on. And then you start typing your answer. So it's quite important. So nowadays, ACCA exam, as you can see, the examiner provided you with clear guidance that you should click on the partner's email, the company's background information and draft financial statements to see whether you can perform some analytical procedures and so on and so forth, a meeting note. And these are shown as exhibits on your left hand side or the attachment on your left hand side. Simply click on them and then copy and paste the requirements into your answer and make sure that you will answer every part of the, uh, of the question set. Okay, it's quite important. Now, finally, let's see the examples of marking in this paper. For example, the audit risk evaluation. So usually there will be two marks per audit risk. But of course, sometimes if, the, uh, if it is too complicated, it may be worth at three marks. So I will usually tell my students if uh, the part A is 12 marks or six, uh, 15 marks, so how many points that you should write in the AAA paper? Should you write 12 points or 15 points? If I were you, I would not do it. If I were you, I would simply divide into three marks, or perhaps I'll be more realistic to be two. And hence, I would write approximately six to eight points. So make sure that each of your points is well explained containing all the necessary steps from my course. If you do that, you'll find this paper relatively interesting and easy to pass. And for example, for some of the questions which is not particularly standardized, for example, using the work of a component auditor, what sort of considerations that you have to consider before uh, you use the work of others. Well, in these types of questions, make sure in the AAA to apply your knowledge and giving your examples or perhaps the examples from the case to better support your point, to better support your answer. And this is the main or key part to success in AAA paper. So according to my observations, there will be normally 20 to 30% of marks in AAA uh, w where the answers are not standardised. You have to show your business common sense. So a key technique I normally advise my students to use is to use the word because. If you use the word because, it forces you to think why you made this point. So sometimes, of course, you cannot explain why the reasons behind it. So an alternative option would be to explain the implications of your point. So for example, the impact on other issues, for example, impact on audit planning, impact on quality control, impact on ethics and so on. So if that's the case, for each and every point that you've made, you will score perhaps 1.5 marks to 2 marks. So if this requirement is for 4 marks or 6 marks, I will not write 4 to 6 points, but instead I will write 2 to 3 points. And make sure each of your points is not a single and simple sentence, but a simple paragraph. It's quite important 
for the AAA students to focus on this, especially for 20 and 30 percent of the uh, business common sense questions. And as you can say, for substantive procedures perhaps, or other procedures, usually there will be one mark per point. So when answering these type of questions, I make sure that you bear in mind that each of your points, you should explain how you do it, what you're trying to do, and why. I mean, when I marked my P7 students' script, I can see their procedures will be no problem with regards to how and why. No problem for that. But what? What sort of document that you should check? This is where most students will find it quite difficult indeed. So make sure that you're ready for that. So what is quite important. So if you can't use a simple word to uh, check what, just to use a sentence again to explain what sort of things you're going to check in the AAA exam. And make sure each and every point to the examiner, you're going to cheat your marker, you're going to treat the examiner as your student, as somebody who doesn't know anything. But reading your answer, the examiner knows everything. If that's the case, you can uh, score very high marks uh, in the AAA paper. Okay, and for ethical threats in the AAA paper, again, usually there will be one mark per point. So be ready for it. So for example, if uh, that's for eight marks, I'll certainly write eight points. So be careful of the mark allocation, okay, to, to, to different types of question in the, in the AAA exam. So, if you've gone through this video, that's very good for you. And the important resources for the AAA paper, you can find it on the ACCA's global website. Just go to a link, accaglobal.com. At the bottom of the page, you can see the past exam paper. And then click on that, and then choose Advanced Audit and Assurance, or AAA. And you will see there will be lots of, lots of resources uh, on that page. It's quite important that you go through them. So, for example, the examiner's comment for each exam sitting and the past exam paper as well. Um, be careful. The key to pass the AAA exam is not about auditing standards. This is right. This is according to our experience. The key to pass it is to really have a solid foundation in your IFIs or International Financial Reporting Standards knowledge. At the same time, show your business common sense. And know a bit about the uh, auditing standard. And uh, no worries, we'll be summarizing all these uh, auditing standards uh, in using our words in our study note. At the same time, if you wish to uh, build up your IFAS solid foundation, IFAS knowledge, I recommend you to read this book. The author is me, Steve. Pick Easy IFAS. I've published this book in Hong Kong in 2019. And of course, you can buy it on Amazon or perhaps you can buy it from a company's website. And um, this book, I've shown our students the practical applications of uh, IFIs, especially for substantive procedures, what sort of things that you're going to check. It's quite important that you understand what sort of things that you're going to check. So in this book, I'll show you the detailed IFIs guidance of each of the standards and in each of the standards, I provided you with quite a lot of examples so you can understand when you're planning the audit of a client, you will see what it might go wrong. So some of the quality points that you can uh, obtain 
during your exam. So reading this book would really help. At the same time, I also published another book. It is the IFR 16 Leases. But this book is not for exam. This book is for practical applications of leases okay, in your real businesses. If you're interested in that, just go to our company's website to buy this book. Of course, we've got the IFR 16 Leases videos as well explaining the whole book, okay? And of course the lecturer is me, again. So that's for today's introduction to AAA. I hope you find it useful. I'm looking forward to seeing you in our course or in the next video. Bye. APC, accounting for your future.